Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and today we'll be talking about color theory. Color theory sounds like a really academic, kind of scary term, but essentially it is just the understanding of how colors are made and mixed with each other to produce other colors, and how they can be paired together to create beautiful and harmonious results. If you've ever been to a museum or seen your favorite artist's work, sometimes you'll wonder how is it they put together these beautiful color combinations? Well, the answer to that is color theory. So what I'm gonna teach you today is essentially what I learned when I was in design school, but also something that I've employed and I use every day with my own art. And I find it a really great tool and skill set to have in order to be able to make quick decisions and um, be able to choose colors that I know will always work really well together. So let's dive in. So first things first is we're going to do a color wheel together. And a color wheel is basically just a training tool for you to understand the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and how they're mixed together to create secondary colors and tertiary colors. To demonstrate this, I have a pad of Blick watercolor paper, as well as some gouache in red, yellow, and blue. Those colors are really all you need in order to create all the other colors that you see. And so I'm using a drinking glass just to help me draw a perfect circle. And I'm gonna be dividing this circle into a lot of different sections, starting with the primary colors first. And primary colors are colors that are the basic building blocks, if you will, and cannot be mixed from other colors. So yellow is a primary color because you can't create yellow from any other colors. The next primary color is blue. And again, blue cannot be created from other colors. So in order to get the color blue, you have to start with a tube of blue paint. Next up is red, and as you can see, I'm creating these wedges of primary colors at equal distances apart. And that's so that I'll be able to demonstrate to you what happens when you mix these colors with each other to produce the other colors that you see in the rainbow and how they interact with one another. So let's recap right here. We have yellow as our first primary color, uh, which is in the first wedge. Then we have red as our second primary color and blue, as our third primary color. Now, these primary colors will be the building blocks for which we create the second set of colors, which are the secondary colors. And secondary colors occur when we mix the primary colors with each other. So yellow and red, for example, will produce a secondary color, orange, which I will show you right now in this wedge that is located in between the two. So let's pick up some yellow and mix it in the middle with some red, and you'll see how when we mix these two together in equal parts, we get orange. So I'm gonna put the orange in between these two. So we now have our first secondary color, which is orange. And as you probably know, there are a lot of different shades of orange from a deep rust orange to a more yellow orange. And those are tertiary colors that we'll discuss in the next section. So I'm gonna clean my brush right now and we're gonna move on to mixing red and blue. I'm gonna pick up some blue and bring it to the middle of my palette and pick up an equal amount of red. And as you can see, when you mix them together, you get a gorgeous shade of purple. And the trick here is really to mix them in equal quantity because any deviation from that will result in a different color altogether. So here you can see in between red and blue, in the middle wedge right at the bottom, I've added my purple swatch. And now our second secondary color is purple, which is the product of the mix between red and blue. And last but not least, we're gonna create the third secondary color, which is the mix between blue and yellow. So I'm gonna pull some blue paint and some yellow paint and mix them together, again, in equal quantities, and we get a nice vivid green. So let's add it to our color wheel right now. And as you can see, we're, we're close to done with this. All we need to do now is to add our tertiary colors to have the full color wheel completed. I'm gonna label these now so that we can easily reference them. And I'm gonna draw a line outwards so that we know that these colors are our secondary colors. And I'm gonna label them with um, the names, which are orange, uh, purple, or violet, if you will, and green. 
And you may be wondering why we're doing this exercise and it kind of feels like a preschool exercise or something, but I assure you that this will come in handy when we start discussing uh, the details of color pairings. So now we're going to jump into the tertiary colors, which are the combinations between the primary colors and the secondary colors. As you'll notice, the tertiary colors are more of a subtle deviation between the colors uh, on either side. So, for example, the orange and the yellow yield a color that is called yellow-orange. And that's actually how these tertiary colors are named. They are named orange-red or yellow-orange. So it's pretty self-explanatory when you're talking about, for example, a yellow-green. It's going to be a green with a little bit more of a yellow color. Or in this case, between a red and an orange, the result would be an orange-red. So let's continue filling all of these in. So right here we have the red-violet, and then we're going to jump to the violet-blue, or blue-violet, which is um, kind of, we also call it an indigo color, uh, after the name of a pigment called indigo. So it's a more night sky or midnight blue color between uh, blue and violet. Next up, we have blue-green, which is also commonly known as a teal color. And so we're gonna add that right here. And I really love tertiary colors because I find them to be very rich and complex, and they're really some of my favorites. And then here we have yellow-green, which gives us a very vibrant uh, lime green. I'm gonna label these tertiary colors now by um, adding some lines that extend a little bit further out to demonstrate that these are further away from the primary colors. And so I'm gonna add the labels to each one of these lines. We're gonna start with red-violet or violet-red. The names are interchangeable uh, as our first tertiary color, followed by red-orange, which is a deep fiery orange. Then we have yellow-orange, which reminds me of the petals on a sunflower. Then we have yellow-green, or again, green-yellow, yellow-green. They're all interchangeable, which is that lime sort of leafy green. And then we have a blue-green, also known as teal or green-blue, if you will. And then last but not least, we have our blue-violet. Now that we've done this color wheel and we have a better understanding of how colors are mixed together to produce secondary and tertiary colors, let's jump into color pairings and how you can select colors that you know for a fact will always work well together. There are two um, that I would say are the most famous color pairings, and that is analogous color combinations and complementary color combinations. The first that we're going to start with is a analogous color pairing. An analogous essentially means that the colors are next to each other on the color wheel. So when we were doing the color wheel and we were creating wedges that were right next to each other, so for example the yellow, the yellow orange, and the reds, those are what's known as analogous colors. They're colors that sit beside each other on the color wheel. So right here I am painting a couple of swatches in those analogous colors. So I've got yellow and orange and red and essentially any other colors that are sitting next to each other on that color wheel that we created. And as you can see here, it creates a really lovely set of colors that work together really beautifully. And that's because they share a lot of the same base colors. And so now that we've tried that with our yellow and orange, let's try it again maybe with a green and blue combination to see how that looks. So I'm starting with a blue straight out of the tube, and then I'm going to be mixing some iterations of blue-green, as well as some greens as well, to show how that comes together in a really lovely and harmonious way. And I think analogous color combinations are among the easiest to mix because it's really just a very set recipe to always get a color combination that works really well. And as you can see here, from blues to greens and everything in between, there are colors that are all adjacent to each other on our color wheel. Here are examples from my collection of pieces with analogous color combinations. Next, 
Next up, we have complementary colors, which are equally incredible. A little bit more complex, but we'll figure it out together. Let's start by adding the label at the top. Unlike analogous colors where the colors are adjacent to one another on the color wheel, complementary colors are where they are across from each other. So for example, orange and blue are complementary colors, as are red and green. So let's do a complementary color pairing, and we're going to do one of my favorites, which is blue and orange. So I'm laying down some blue first, and then right next to it, I'm going to add some um, nice vivid orange. And complementary colors have been used and favored by many of the masters throughout the ages. And that's really just because it works so well together, as you can see. So now we have our blue and we have our orange. When you mix complementary colors with each other, the result is an earthy, kind of neutralized color in between. And that will vary based on the colors you're combining. So on one side, I'm gonna have a wash of my blue. And then on the other side, I'm going to add a gradient of orange. And you'll see what happens in the middle when they meet. So right here, I'm bringing my orange towards my blue. And as you can see, as I mix them together, the middle turns into this brownish kind of green. And when you're working with complementary color pairings, I like to think about it as being like the director of a movie, where you pick a star or a leading character. And in this case, it would be either blue or orange. And I would pick one of the two to be the brightest color in your piece. And all the other colors would be what I would call the supporting cast. And so you can make the other colors a lot more muted and allow the leading or star color to stand out more. So let me show you an example of this. So I'm laying down my orange first, and the orange is going to be my leading color. And then all the other colors that I add to this color palette will be more muted iterations in between the blue and orange gradient that I created above. You can also water them down a little bit so they pop a little bit less. I've added a minty kind of blue and green right next to my orange. And I'm going to add some more colors as well so you can see how even as I add more colors to this color palette, it still looks very harmonious and structured and it doesn't end up looking like a random array of rainbow colors. I'm adding one more color at the end which is a watered down and kind of muddier version of an orange. And these muddier or deader colors really yield some amazing results when you pair them with their brighter counterparts. So let's review. We have our orange right here as our main color, and all the other colors are going to be the supporting cast, and they're going to be more muted and less saturated uh, versions of colors that you'll find above on the gradient that I created uh, between the blue and the orange. Let's dive into the next and most famous complementary color pairing, I think in the whole world, and that is the pairing between the colors red and green. And I think everyone knows this as the Christmas colors because it's been so commercialized and I guess everyone has seen it by now. But um, here we have red and green, which lie opposite each other on the color wheel, just like the previous example of blue and orange. So I'm laying down my green, which is a um, middle of the road kind of green, not too pale, not too dark. And I would never use these two colors right out of the tube like this together. I just think that they're too saturated and I'd have to mix them with other colors in order to make them work a little bit better. So right next to my initial swatches, I'm doing that same gradient exercise as I did above, which is making the red and green gradients meet in the middle. And right here, it becomes sort of a brownish, greenish, more neutral color. And this is really the sweet spot of where you're gonna get the most beautiful variations between green and red. Let's do another example of a color palette using this complementary color combination. I'm going to use green as my leading character or, or star character, um, and then have the other colors in my color palette be more muted versions of the red, which I will mix to be a little bit more earthy and more neutral so that it doesn't compete with the green and allows it to take center stage. 
And as I add more colors to the right, you'll see that I'm going with these very complex colors, these brick and terracotta kind of colors, and even adding some deeper colors. You don't have to necessarily go too pale either. You can have really deep and rich jewel tones or more natural looking colors like moss or plum, for example. As you can see from a complementary color pairing that I really don't like, like red and green, you can get some really beautiful uh, colors coming out of it. So I'm going to label this green as my star color and the rest of them as the supporting cast. Let's do one final example, which will be a color combination of uh, purple and yellow as the complementary colors. And just like the rest, they lie opposite each other on the color wheel. And so I'm mixing a purple right here um, using blue and red, but I assure you it's a purple that I'm laying down right here. And then I'm going to wash my brush and get a nice vivid yellow to contrast the dark purple. And in my opinion, complementary colors very rarely look great straight out of the tube. You really have to work with them a little bit more in order to get a more sophisticated color palette. So right here, we're gonna do another gradient going from purple and mixing in the yellow. And as you can see, just like above, when you get to the middle of the gradient, that's where you get these incredibly sophisticated colors that will really bring your artwork to the next level. And so you don't have to create a gradient when you're working, but just be aware when you're mixing colors on your palette that mixing in a complementary color will often give you a more interesting and sophisticated color. So let's work on one more color palette, which is based on yellow and purple, and use yellow as our star uh, leading character. And so the other colors that I'm going to mix in here are going to be watered down or more neutralized instances of either color. So right next to the yellow, I have this very kind of grayish purple. And next to that, I have sort of a dusty marigold and earthy browns that have a little bit of a purple undertone to them. And so these make for some really interesting and unusual color combinations that will definitely help elevate your art to the next level. Let's wrap up these swatches by labeling them with um, the yellow as the star and the other colors as the supporting characters. And again, here are some examples from my collection of pieces that I did with complementary color combinations. So you can see here there's yellow and purple, which is something that we reviewed together. And in this fun mermaid piece, it's basically a take on the red and green complementary color combination. So there you have it. This is basically all you need to know about color theory if you're starting out. The more you bring this into your daily practice, the better you'll get and the more second nature it will be. So if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.